DJ 53rd Annual Lord's Passover. 53rd Annual Lord's Passover is going to be held down here in Florida. It's going down. You're here tonight to get a chance to be righteous enough to be worthy of God. Come on to save you. That's right. It's going down. The Lord's 53rd Annual Passover. When we say we no coward, we stop that business. We no cowards up in here. Book your hotels now at the Holiday Inn Express and Suites. The IHG Hotel, 301 Tucker Lane, Cocoa Beach, Florida, 32926. Pass with all your dishes, pots, and sports nights. I gotta like this. This is like an apartment. And a hotel. You know what I mean? This here right here is about to be holy ground. This is gonna be holy ground. All our beautiful, wonderful brothers and sisters from all over the world. You understand? We can boast that now. Brothers and sisters coming not only from this every state, but from all over the world. I heard the numbers this year is ridiculous. We had to buy out the whole hotel. Friday, April 15th at the Space Coast Convention Center. This is going to be glorious. glorious. You understand? Black stands in the Spanish. This is the type of thing that you need to be hearing every single day. You understand? Getting some clarity. Knocking that confusion out of the way. You understand? The spirit of the Christian church, man, allows us not to see the truth. And allows us not to seek the truth, man. And allows us to cry in silence. To cry on our pillow. To cry in the dark. And get no justice, man. You understand? That's the spirit of the Christian church. You understand? Having that spirit and thinking that way and having that ideology, man, once again, it has destroyed us, man. That's why we say that it's worse than any drug that we've ever been on, man. You understand? And we are addicted to it. And as the eyes of BK, man, the priests and prophets of the Lord, we coming out here to get black slaves and Hispanics off of this drug, man. Because we see what it's doing to us. We see what it did to us before we decided to start to follow, uh, follow God, man. We see what it is, man. We put on the spirit of the Lord. You understand? And we decided to come out here and teach the truth according to the Bible, man. You understand? Take me back to the Bible. Give me James 4 and 4. You got that? 3. This is the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulterers, know ye not that the friendship, sloppy, that the friendship of the world is enmity. You understand? So why, why, is, why is the Bible, why is the scripture saying that uh, he adulterous. Why is he say? Why is they? Why is the Lord calling us adulterous, man? Because we, the spirit of the spirit of the Christian church allows us to cheat on God, man. It allows us to be whores on God, man. It allows us to be sluts on God. That's what the Christian spirit allows us to do. That's what that church allows us to do. It allows us to be sluts and whores against God. That's why he's calling us adulterous, man. Right? Keep reading. Go on, come. Go on, come. No, ye not. That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. You understand? It says, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? You don't understand that being a friend of such a disgusting world, it makes you an enemy of God? But I'll tell you what, because of the Christian spirit, thanks to the Christian spirit, thanks to the Christian church, thanks to, thanks to our oppressor's religion, it allows us to be friends with everything in this world. It allows us to be friends with our slave masters, man. It allows us to be friends with their, with their religion. It allows us to join their culture. So now you got black slaves and Hispanics that's walking around gay. Now you got black slaves and Hispanics that's killing their babies. You understand? And that's why God is calling us cheaters. Because we cheated him. We cheat God for every baby that we kill in that abortion clinic, man. We cheat God every time we light up a butt, a cigarette, a capone. Every single time we are cheating on our God and worshiping another man. And that's the spirit of the Christian church. We need to serve everything but God. 
And Christianity teaches you to serve yourself. That's why you got a my God. Oh, not my God. Not my God. Negro, what God you got? Not my relationship. My relationship different. What's another one? Not my church. My pastor don't teach that. Boom, crap. You understand? You are selfish. You don't love God. And you don't have the spirit of Christ. I hate to break your heart, but that's the truth, man. But you can't get the spirit of Christ. You make yourself God, man. You serve yourself. Anything your ears don't like, you say it's not my God. You're really talking about yourself, man. You're really talking about yourself because you worship yourself. Brothers and sisters want to ask us, well, why does God not want us to celebrate your birthday? Because you think you're God. The heck are you celebrating, man? But you listen to your boss or you listen to your manager, you'll never come up against them. You understand? But outside of that slavery, which you're which you, which you, which you running around the bush, that's a slavery. Your job is a slavery. You know damn well you don't want to get up at that 4 o'clock in the morning and go serve some oppressor and get some crumbs to pay your rent. Brothers and sisters, ask yourself when the last time you went on a vacation. Hmm? How many years ago, brothers and sisters? When the last time you had a vacation? When the last time you got to go to the Bahamas? Huh? Huh? Brothers and sisters, you ain't never even been out. I know brothers that ain't never left D.C. I know brothers and sisters that ain't never left D.C. I brought up Tyson's Corner to a brother the other day. He said, I don't even, I don't know what I said. Brothers and sisters have been trapped, you understand, in this spirit of Christianity, man. And the Bible is telling us, don't you know being a friend of this world makes you an enemy of God? And that's right. It should make you an enemy of God. Because what are we doing? What are we telling ourselves? And we respect everything else but God. How does your boss get the water? So how does your boss get more respect than God? You do whatever and whatever your boss say, yes sir, sir, yes sir, yes ma'am, I'm going to do it. I'm going to help. I got it. I can do that. I can do that. But you won't, you won't do that for the Lord. You won't do that for God. But that's the Christian spirit, man, to do everything for yourself. That's the Christian spirit. You respect your baby mother more than God. Good night. You worship the ground that she walk on. You kiss those bunions every night. Good night. Boy, I got more living bunion than the kids. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong kissing a woman's feet. But kiss around the bunions. <laughs> you understand? Don't, don't do that. God her the right way. You understand? Don't kiss the bunions. <laughs> what, 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 what the brothers bringing out is totally heavy, man. But listen, we cannot, we cannot respect things in this earth more than God. You cannot worship your woman more than God. You know, if, if you do that, you know what happens? You listen to her. Everything she says is right, and you're always wrong. Whereas though a man can be wrong, and a woman for sure can be wrong. You have to lead, you have to guide her through the, th you have to guide her through the guidance of the laws of God, man. And, in, in that, and that's how your relationship fails. Your relationship fails because you don't tell her no. When she needs to be told no sometimes. You don't tell her, babe, we need to do this this way. You are the head of the household. So you need to guide the family the right way through Christ. But, but guess what? Some of y'all, you're not, you're not, you don't have enough carriage. You don't have enough testicles to run your household the right way. You got your tail tucked between your legs and you worship your woman more than God. And God is punishing you, punish you for that. Go ahead, brother. Full sign of Christ, man. Get, get that priest and uh, get that priest and officer man a hand, man. Once again, everything you hear, you know you agree with it. How could you not? How could you not? You know, we all know that the Christian spirit been playing us for I don't know how long. We all know it. That's why most brothers and sisters don't even want to hear about the Bible nowadays. You don't even want to hear about it. The moment you hear Bible, you're like, nah, white man wrote it. Mommy, you hear Bible? Nah, I don't want to believe in a God that's like that because you just believe in yourself. You want to you give respect to every other God yeah, on Valentine's Day. You about to give respect to all of that God. Is, all of that God is you about to give respect to. The God of this Bible, we, are, we, we, we got to give him our respect, man. He's earned it. You understand? You look in this Bible, you look through these thousands of years of records. This is one heck of a father to have the mercy that he's had on black slaves and Hispanics. You understand? To have the mercy that he's had on us after every time we've disappointed our father, he still has mercy on us. He has mercy on us so much that he's going to send back his favorite son to destroy and bathe the streets of America in the blood of our slave masters. 
That's how much mercy he still has for us because he keeps his promise, man. The Christian church don't teach you to keep a promise. The Christian church don't keep a promise, man. We've been getting lied to in that Christian church for generations, man. So why do, why do we not fess up to it? Why, why we don't tell the truth in it, man? Our lives have not changed and we grew up in the Christian church and your life has not changed. It did not make you a better man. It did not make you a better woman. It did not make you love black people more. We have to actually confront Christianity and the spirit behind it. It did not do anything for the black community, man. The Christian church in the last 30 years made over $400 billion. Any brothers, brothers and sisters from BC, Maryland, how many churches is in your neighborhood? You got about four to five churches in your neighborhood. And you, on every corner, you understand? You go on Walmart, you got sections that section all. You understand what, the, what, this, devil, uh, what this devil is pushing, right? But what has the Christian church done for us? Yeah, in the neighborhood, the Chinese man in the neighborhood get more money. They lights stay on. The Christian church with all the money is in your neighborhood. But the Chinese store lights, it stays on. The corner stores, those lights stay on. Yeah, they stay in business. You understand? Our businesses failed. Guess what happened to that little Chinese restaurant when COVID hit? They was all good to go. Because they know COVID hit, that means you lost your job. That means you only got a little bit of money. And they surely going to give you that three-piece uh, chicken and fries, man. They stayed in business. Our businesses failed. Our businesses went in the ruins. It would be more beneficial just to turn all of the church buildings into clinics and shelters. Wouldn't that help? But nope. Nope, they put the chains on the door and they said, cash out us your tithes. The white man got paid when you sent your tithes. Anybody that got cash out knows that it gets taxed. You understand that, right? So cash out group, why you pay your tithes, but the Christian church, oh, they shut those doors when COVID hit, man. And they're gonna shut it again. Joel Olstein and them, they're gonna shut them again. But how many times is the door gonna get shut in our face before we decide to open our eyes, man? The doors in our ISUBK is wide open. If you're black, native, and Hispanic, our door is open. The water, you understand? Hey, just think about it for just a second. Everybody want to think outside the box, huh? Everybody want to think outside the box. Well, just think about it. If the Christian churches, all the, all the Christian churches that's in our neighborhood, what, just think about the difference it can make with all the flooding in the hospitals if they just turn their building into a clinic. If they just offer just a little bit of assistance with, uh, with the personal things that we deal with. The water, another point. How many black snitches in this- Shalom, Israel. It's that time again. The week of Passover is packed with exciting events. Hosted by the ISUPK and Commanding General Yohannes. On Tuesday, a deep sea fishing trip with the generals. Arrival and boarding time at 7.30 a.m. The boat leaves at 8 a.m. sharp. Then on Wednesday, April 13th, join us for the annual lamb slaughter from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., making sure the children of Israel have fresh lamb for the Passover. Then, after that, the ISUPK is having a fish fry from 4 p.m. until, which will lead to the scripture breakdown class with General Mahayim. Then, on Thursday morning, Hebrew Academy participants will see if they have what it takes to endure the Hebrew Academy trials. Commanding General Yohanna has something special lined up for the children with a children's party from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Come join Commanding General Yohanna on Coco Beach as we renew our oath unto the Lord. Hotel Ballroom, All Black and Hebrew Academy Dinner from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. And then on Friday, 
April 15th at 5 p.m. Join us for the Lord's annual Passover as commanded in the scriptures at 5 p.m. sharp. On Saturday, April 16th, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's right, we're gonna keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Commanding General Yohanna has it all lined up for you, Israel. Come keep the Lord's Passover. Shalom.